Managing a successful project starts with the partnership. The University of Stavanger in Norway has participated in several Interreg projects. Professor Jan Frick says the first team meeting can be crucial in determining the project structure. It's a blank sheet and you, and you have to find out who are these other people, what are their backgrounds, what are their possibilities, what are their limitations, what are their capacities in order to be able to deliver. And, and you have to uh, find out how, how to, uh, the various partners can complement each other in, uh, in the project. One of the key issues in cooperation programs is, is, is the partnership. Um, without a partnership approach, without involving the actors uh, um, relevant for the, for the specific problem, um, you cannot find the right solutions. BEST was a North Sea program project that brought together small businesses as diverse as fish farming, pottery making and tourist tea shops, all in remote areas of the UK, Norway and Sweden. The aim was to generate ideas and share best practice. Project leader Alison Riley remembers they had a delayed start due to a legal problem. I think part of the delay in the setting up of the project in the, in the initial stages before we could get really active was that there wasn't like a just an, an off-the-shelf, off-the-peg partnership legal agreement and it took quite a while to get the wording right on that. Uh, but once that was set up, that kind of set out the framework for how we were going to work and who was responsible for what. And if people didn't deliver on what they were meant to, what the, what the effect of that would be, what would happen. Comcoast was a project aimed at improving the coastal defences of the North Sea shorelines. The UK manager was Karen Thomas. We weren't the lead partner and the lead partner had a very technical and engineering strength in terms of the people that were involved. So it was often quite hard to bring in some of the other elements like social participation and economics uh, and to get them equally balanced in the project. So that was the challenge that we faced. But I think we all worked together very well and the individuals involved could see the value in what each other were trying to do. I believe that these projects at least the ones that we have been part of, has been a kind of engine for the development of the, of the county and community. Uh, and the reason is that it's much more, as I said, it, it's much more than the delivery of the project itself. It's an emphasis. People are able to compare what they're doing in their own region, compare with other regions. They are able to learn from each other. So it's creating uh, quite a lot of, not only the direct reports, but activity beyond the project itself. Along with creative thinking and innovative solutions, a well-run project can also be profitable, returning more money to its stakeholders than their initial investment. That happened to Alison Riley's project BEST, which made an estimated 2 million euros in extra income for its participating small businesses. The final element in the structure of a well-run project is communication. After all, there's no point in having a good news story to tell but keeping it to yourself. The importance of communicating indirect successes is recognised at the highest levels of the European Commission. Communication is very important. So I suppose that the people should uh, inform more via, via the press and via the television what is being done what are the difficulties and what are the main objectives for the day-to-day -day, day -day life of the people. This is very important today because the identity of, of Europe and the identity of being an European, it, it, they have to understand that a lot of money is being spent for their goodwill, but really they don't understand where the money is going for. And so it's, it's a need for informing the people of, of, of what is happening.